God has called us to be a kingdom of priests. In other words, if you want to be in the kingdom, you have to be a priest. See, the kingdom is for priests. Like if we were talking about a society of botanists, if you wanted to be in the society, you'd have to be a botanist. Or if we were talking about a race of giants, if you wanted to be in that race, you'd have to be a giant. So when we talk about a kingdom of priests, if you want to be in the kingdom, you've got to be a priest. What is the distinctive ministry of the priest? can be summed up in one word, sacrifice, that's right. In the Bible, the only persons permitted to offer sacrifice were priests. If anybody other than a priest did it, the judgment of God came upon them. King Saul is an example. Now, Peter says, we are called to offer spiritual sacrifices. We are not called to offer the animal sacrifices that were offered under the Old Covenant. What are the spiritual sacrifices that we are called to offer? Let me suggest to you that you can find an outline answer in Hebrews chapter 13 and verses 15 and 16. Hebrews 13 verses 15 and 16 Therefore by him that is Jesus Christ let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name but do not forget to do good and to share for with such sacrifices God is well pleased there are I suppose you could say four sacrifices mentioned praise thanksgiving sharing and doing good and the writer of Hebrews says those four sacrifices please God if you look in Romans chapter 12 and verse 1 you find another sacrifice that is required of New Testament believers Romans 12:1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. God requires that every New Testament believer presents his body or her body to God as a living sacrifice on the altar of God's service. These are basically the sacrifices of the New Testament priesthood. We could look also, I think, in Hebrews, the seventh chapter, verses 24 and 25. Speaking of Jesus in his heavenly ministry. But because he continues forever, he has an unchangeable priesthood. Notice it's a priesthood. Therefore he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him since he ever lives to make intercession for them. What is the priestly ministry of Jesus there? Making intercession. So we can kind of round out the picture. Our priestly ministry is first of all the offering of ourselves as living sacrifices to God. Then it's a life of praise, of thanksgiving, of worship, a life of sacrifice and doing good for others. And in a certain sense, its consummation is intercession. It's interesting to consider the time span in the life of Jesus. Thirty years of perfect family life, three and a half years of intense public ministry, and almost two thousand years of intercession. I think if we could see that, it would give us a different perspective on ministry.